Well, as I told my team, um, I think they're coming, but um, no, I wasn't happy with how we played totally. I, I think we had moments, you know, uh, a couple guys had really good moments. Uh, two that I got coming in now, Book had a couple of moments one way, and yeah, he was sick the last two days. And Jace, for a freshman, I thought played pretty well, did some good things. Um, but when you're rotating guys like we were, and if I was to be honest with you, uh, you know, I'm trying to coach my team, and I'm doing stuff on TV, and I'm doing stuff in between uh, sessions, and um, that was a little taxing on me. It was good, though, I and mean, I'm glad I did it. Our little cancer person was unbelievable, and that was one of the highlights of my day to watch her ring that bell. But um, we didn't uh, we didn't play very well. I, you know, I had a couple guys, especially our guards, that didn't play as well. And yet, uh, I like his team. I think he's a damn good coach. They cut as hard as anybody we play. And when you do that, some things happen. So I think they're going to be better. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get a lot better. This is really early. I mean, usually we're playing that first exhibition game in about a week and a half from now. But because of the open date here, because of the open date with us, so our media could drive seven, eight hours up here. By the way, thank you guys. Um, because we didn't have a, a football game this weekend. It worked out to be the right weekend. But uh, all in all, it really was about um, I guess a homecoming. I didn't want a homecoming about me. I wanted a homecoming for all the people that helped me get to where I got. And that means all the people, the great people in these communities, the former players, uh, Mooch and Mike Garland. And it was, uh, it was a special time for me. And so I can't be too critical of my team because I kind of took away from some of it. And so I'll blame me for a little bit of how we played. I'll give Northern credit for how they play. And I'll give my players a little blame that we didn't do enough things that we need to do to be successful. But uh, there were moments, there were stretches, and that's what we're gonna build on. So I guess you have players to ask a question. Is this like the final four? So yep. you get them first and then I'm last, is that right? Yep, and questions for players. We got like to pass around to the three members. Gavin, okay. how it's been for you guys to kind of live the, the experience that the coach had here, see some of the places that he's been to, and, and kind of what it's been seeing him go through this. Um, I mean, this whole week, and it's been great um, being up here in the UP, uh, just kind of experiencing what coach went through growing up and kind of going back to the school and seeing all the gyms and seeing all the restaurants that he used to go to and seeing places where he used to live. It's all been great. And uh, I mean, just seeing Coach been smiling and stuff just kind of brings up that kid side of him. So just seeing all this stuff and experience, all this, it's been a great experience. Uh, the whole community, it's been great talking to them and meeting everybody. So it's been a great experience. You're up, Chase. That was really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Xavier kind of summed it up. Just seeing Coach come back and the smile on his face as soon as we got here. I mean, I think that was the best move for us, seeing Coach so happy to see people he's growing up with, seeing the school, seeing his jersey getting retired. I mean, it's been such a cool experience for us to come back and see it. Right, Casey, go ahead. Chase, talk about your time here. Obviously, your dad played at Michigan State under Coach Izzo. Uh, is it as scary as maybe he thought it was? Is it as good as he thought as you thought it was? I guess talk about uh, your experiences so far. Well, so far, I mean, it's been great being here with coaches on my team. I feel like we have a really solid team. I mean, today we didn't, we didn't execute on a lot of things, but it's still really early in the season. But I definitely think that we have a really good team and I've been enjoying my experience so far. Memory making moments has been the three words that we've heard Izzo say for the past couple of weeks. Are there any memories that he has shared with you guys that have really stuck out in your brains? Well, I've all been up here. Maybe a funny story. I'll probably say um, 
when we went back to his old neighborhood and saw the uh, old house he used to live in with his college money. So definitely the cool experience to see that. It was definitely a fun experience to hear about that. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say the same going back over there and seeing all the uh, homes over there. It was pretty cool to see. I, I, you, were, you wouldn't have fit in though. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were like, uh, you know, six, four inch ceilings. Yeah. And it, it would have been, your head would have been out the top of that thing. Xavier, uh, can you just talk a little bit about the, I mean, this, a year ago at this point, everything's new. You're trying to figure out what your role is, if you're going to have a role. It's sort of wide-eyed, and I'm wondering, coming into this season, you're starting, you're going to play a more substantial role. You understand what it takes physically to compete. I'm wondering, your mindset, even coming into games like this and coming into the season, how it's different and what you're feeling right now. Uh, I mean, yeah, th this off season, and I mean, from last year up until this point now, I mean, I've put in a lot of work, uh, gotten stronger, put on a lot of weight. So kind of this last season, uh, experiencing it, just kind of getting a feel for college basketball has definitely helped. And then this past summer, going to Spain and uh, just working all summer has definitely helped. And kind of just my mindset going into this season is just taking care of what I need to take care of in terms of defense, rebounding, I mean, the team, they're going to need me to score, so make shots, uh, just do everything for the team, so. Right. Mark with UP Sports Talk, I got a question for any of the three of you. What was it like to play in the Dome? Obviously, you two have probably played in the Dome before. For the Northern kids, they don't usually do this. Uh, what was the experience like, atmosphere-wise, shooting the basketball, et cetera, playing in a Dome? Uh, man, it was it was a great experience. I mean, I've, I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, no, it was huge. Uh, the lights were bright. Uh, there was a lot of fans all over the place. So it was great. It was a great feeling uh, playing out in front of everybody. So, Chase. Yeah, I definitely say it had like a mini Final Four feel to it, 100%. Just uh, seeing all the lights, all the people that came out to support us, the Northern Michigan and Coach Izzo. So it was definitely a great experience to see that. For both of you guys, um, the coach mentioned going into the off season that one of the things he wanted to do was get to the line more. And you guys managed to do that today. You tried. I mean, is that how much of a concert effort are you guys trying to make right now to, to not just get to contact but finish through contact and all the things that you were able to do today? Uh, yeah, I mean, coach harps on it a lot, but we. I mean, he tells me a lot. He wants me to get to the line more. And eventually, when we do get to the line, we got to make our free throws. We spent a lot of time in practice working on free throws. Um, so, I mean, the most important part is obviously getting to the line, but also another important part is making the free throws when you do get to the line. So. Jace, for you guys as guards, too, I mean, it seems like a lot of downhill action to try and get hit the rim and, and get some extra points. Yeah, I definitely feel like for the guards, I mean, there's some times where the ball's just not going in from the, from the perimeter, so we got to find easier ways to get shots up. So definitely getting to the line definitely helps that confidence. And just seeing that ball go through kind of gets our offense going. So definitely getting to the line is a huge part this year. Go ahead, Kelly. Right, well, you thanks. talked a lot last night about hard work being instilled in you when you were growing up here in the UP. Just how did your upbringing in, in Iron Mountain and your college years in Marquette prepare you for you know when you made the jump? To Michigan State, and what did it mean having your kids here this weekend to experience all of this, knowing that you know they've never lived here? To you. Yeah. Well, before I answer that, I'm gonna let these two go because at the final four, they don't they don't make them answer five or six questions like that. You know, <laughs> you guys been good, so get the hell out of here now. Hey, hey, you good, Jim? I'm I'm good. That's fine. Okay. I'll answer the rest of them. Um, you know, um, there were so many people. You know, they. they there's a proverb that it takes a village to raise a child. And um, I think that's very true. And uh, I had so many people that helped raise me, mentor me. That's what sometimes frustrates me with this day and age is, uh, boy, I, I was mentored by so many different people. I mean, I had four of my high school football and basketball coaches here. I had an old uh, AD here. I, I, you know, I just, there's just a lot of people my father couldn't be here, but I think of how many people helped me um, to understand what it takes to be successful, and I think the grind is all part of it, you know. Uh, one thing I told my players, you know, I hate entitlement. I despise entitlement. And I said, you aren't going to find many entitled people up where I'm from. And I'm damn proud of that. I really am. Um, you know, 
If you earn it, you get it. But entitlement means you haven't earned it yet and you expect it. And uh, there's a process and a journey to be successful in whatever we do, you, me, everybody else. And um, it's getting a little lost right now. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm vowing to bring it back. So we'll see. And this trip meant a lot to me, the people they met, the things they saw, what they got to do. Um, players were great, by the way, you know, in fairness to them. It's hard to do what they did and have to play in a game and um, even in and out, you know. It, 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 I'm not an excuse maker for them. I already took care of that with them. But I also apologize to them because I couldn't do all the things I needed to do in the last two days. But it was worth every bit of it. And this was... It wasn't a one-dimensional trip. It was a three- or four-dimensional trip, and we had a lot of them covered. Stephen, Tom, I'm wondering, uh, with Trey, how do you, where do you sort of foresee him as your, do you foresee him as your primary backup one? We saw him obviously go on and no, off. I don't know. There's no, there's no right now. You know, relax because there's no primary anything right now. Um, I had a starting group out there tonight that started the game. I changed one of them at halftime. Um, Trey Holloman had been playing maybe as good as anybody. Most of the summer struggled a little bit in Europe and then coming back. Jackson Cole has probably played as well as anybody. And I'm also trying to look at who can I have off the bench. You know, we're the school that brought Morris Peterson off the bench. He played more minutes than anybody and became an All-American and a pro as the sixth man, you know. And we need some scoring coming off. Jackson and Trey bring that. But Trey, I thought, played really well today. And so, you know, we'll make those decisions. As they say, um, only to some of you does it matter who starts. It really matters who finishes. Uh, my best example of that is when Draymond was a freshman and uh, he, uh, he early played the first half of the year. The second half, he started playing a little more. And then at the end of every game, he was like playing eight out of the last 12 minutes. And, uh, and so that's what we're looking for yet. But I'm gonna say this publicly, I'm not determining the starting lineup. They are, they are. And, uh, and it'll be factual. In other words, through stats, through winning, through the things they gotta do. So I got, I got a lot of good players. Um, I got a lot of depth. Um, somebody's gotta step up. You know, and I think they will. Um, Jaden struggled today, but uh, I think sometimes he puts too much pressure on himself. He's an unbelievable student, unbelievable kid, and now he's got to become an unbelievable player because it's his time and his turn. And I do think that will meet that. So that would help a lot. You could still see Trey off the ball some, though, moving forward. Oh, yeah. Is that still in the conversation? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Right. I thought you meant about starting. Yeah. No, no, no. Trey's no. going to play 1 2. Okay. Trey's going to play 2 1. Is one of my better shooters, so he's going to play both positions. Trey and Jeremy will definitely play together, so you know, so uh, yeah, yeah. Tom, I grew up in I grew up in the Irmo and Kingsbury area. Um, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the Irmo and Kingsbury area, knowing God I'm bless you. And you, <laughs> you wore the right colors because you got gold and black on, so you weren't a flipper. So, yeah. sorry, flavor born and raised. <laughs> and, anywho, I grew up. One of those days. Go ahead. <laughs> I grew up knowing the Iron Mountain, the legacy that you left in Iron Mountain. How do you feel that the legacy now, because of the impact that you've had in the town, how do you feel like that legacy is still standing now that it, your jersey has been retired here at um, Northern? Do you feel like the impact that you made in my hometown and yours, um, do you feel like that's still standing? And do you feel like that's going strong every single day? No, I don't think it's going strong every single day. And I don't think, um, you know, getting my jersey retired, most people do that when they score 20 a game and win national championships. And this is, uh, I don't think just a gift, but I think it was a different kind of jersey retirement. Um, my buddy Marinucci has accomplished a lot more things individually and team-wise than I did. I think they looked at my entire book, not just a chapter or two. And um, But there's a lot of guys more deserving of it than I am. And I don't say it humbly, I say it honestly. But 
you know, I, I can't have the impact on our mouth, and I'm not there enough, you know, I'm, I'm not here enough. So that's why these things are important to me. And they're important to Steve. That's why we come back up here with the, uh, the home he's developed, and I've raised money, given money to it, because it's always great when you have a sense of purpose to go back to where you're from. And, uh, you know, our little girl with cancer today, watching her ring that bell was, um, I mean, I was just the greatest, you know, and I said to my team in my locker room, I'm worried about you playing hard. You're fighting to be a good player, she's fighting for her life. You know, we lose perspective of things as being an agent, I think, um, too much. And so, uh, I've earned some things. I have, but not as many things as I've been given. And uh, my earning is not done yet. I still got a lot of things I want to accomplish both for my sport, both for my university, both for my alma mater, and definitely for my hometown, which, uh, I mean, they were my first 18 years of life, you know. Um, those old coaches were phenomenal. My parents were phenomenal. Um, I was lucky. So I'm uh, still working at it, but I'm, uh, you know, somebody asked me, you know, did you do this this year because you're gonna retire? I don't know. It has nothing to do with that. It's just uh, the timing worked out. And Rick Conley did a great job with his group of figuring out a way to get that dome to work. And I heard a couple days ago it was pretty tough sledding because they couldn't get the turf up, you know? <laughs> and uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, they did. And I mean, did you enjoy the setting? Forget the game. Did you enjoy the same people? Um, come together like they did. I mean, it was a happening, you know, and uh, now what do we do with it? Now what do we do with it? Do we take it and run? Do we build on it? Do we, or do we just let it go as a one-time happening? And that's why I tried to encourage the crowd, make this a happening that lasts. We'll see if it does. Tom, yesterday we spoke and you, you said even then that you knew how much this was gonna mean to the people up here in the U Upper Peninsula, but did it meet your expectations? And when you saw, I don't know if you saw the, the line <laughs> wrapping around the Superior Dome, I've never seen anything like that up there at the Superior Dome, but did you see that? And then did, you, did this uh, meet the expectations that you had for the people and for the crowd, and et cetera? Yeah, no, it really didn't meet them. Um, it 10 times superseded them. You know, when I saw people standing up there, I was just looking. You probably wondered what the hell I was doing. I was just saying to myself, God, if my dad could see this, or God, if Glenn Brown could see this, or, you know, Buck Nystrom, the guys that helped me when I was here. And uh, and I, I thought how lucky I am that I'm in a position to have a chance to do something like this. Because if there were 11, 12,000 people there and everybody didn't have a good time, because it really wasn't about the game this time. You know, now I have to go analyze the film and then it'll be about the game. <laughs> but right now, it was about bringing a bunch of people together and being able to say thank you, thank you for, for helping mold me. You know, everybody thinks you can do things on your own. That's what's wrong. We're a very selfish society right now. So I'm not good for, a, you notice I don't have any phone advertisements uh, in my back because I hate these things, you know. I think uh, they uh, they create problems of keeping you siloed, and uh, but I guess it's the people, not the phone, that do it. And uh, today, you know, I asked my players when we went to dinner the other night at uh, the Beacon House. I said, "Leave your phones in your pocket, you know. Enjoy the moment. Don't be looking back on what's going on back home or anything." So it superseded anything. Uh, did it supersede yours? Did anybody in here think you could get this done? I didn't. That's why you media guys, you ask questions, you don't answer them. I ask a question and this is what I get. I didn't think it could, but I was really impressed. And I know how hard some of our people, we had people that came up here three times to help because there's not as much money, there's not as much opportunity here. Uh, to have the people to be able to do something like this. Just put out the towels is a 
is, is an incredible effort. And if there was a little thing, as you notice, I've named, I've named it three times. Um, I'm going to get Mike uh, over at the Pittsburgh Steelers to come over here and coach your, our youpers on how to wave a damn towel. You know what I mean? Most of you must have blown their nose or sat on them. I don't know what they did, but we put out 12,000. There weren't as many going crazy as I thought there would be. Right? Drying off from the rain. Huh? Drying off from the rain. The hell with the rain. It never used to bother you to have rain, snow. I mean, what are we doing? Are we getting soft up here or what? Next question. Now, um, I want to ask you about Xavier a little bit. And just sort of, I mean, that last year, obviously, within the season, you saw leaps and bounds. And I'm wondering what your hopes are for him this year and what, what you see from him right now. Well, yeah, really good week. Um, really good week. And uh, didn't play as well today, but he was sick. He was sick yesterday at practice, and uh, I didn't even know if he could go today. And so I, I, I think a little bit of that, but you, you saw him not being as aggressive like he's been. He's been very aggressive in practice, and then he made a couple of moves. That one driving move was a really aggressive move. He hit some shots. Yeah, Xavier has got to play good for us to win too. But I think he's going to play good. I'm, I'm, you know, him and uh, and Jackson. I mean. We're really strong in that position, and Jackson can play both positions. So, Book is, uh, you know, he's got to keep working on his defense, which will always be the case. But uh, he's made a lot of progress. He's 22 pounds heavier. He's a lot stronger than he was. And uh, now it's taking the mental approach of being more physical. You know, I don't know how many in this room have ever done it, but sometimes when you're heavy and you lose a lot of weight, or sometimes when you're skinny and you gain a lot of weight, you have to learn how to play with your new weight. Like I used to tell Draymond, no, Draymond, you're 30 pounds lighter. It's okay to dunk now. Go ahead and dunk, you know. But he wasn't used to doing that. And Book wasn't, isn't used to some things to be 22, 23 pounds heavier. So constantly reminding him, no, no, you can do this now. You're, you're just in better shape. You're better. And uh, so I think he'll get better. Do you see him in Jackson? together at all? Is Cut, yeah, 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 we did that a little bit, a little bit over in Europe. Um, you know, if we, if, especially if teams are a little big, because then we got scoring at every position. So I do see that happening some. I see them playing together some. A couple more starting in front. Coach, you started with uh, group rotations, like you said you were going to. Was there a specific group that you liked? And are these groups that you use in practice, or were you just experimenting when you go out there? Too. Well, I was experimenting. What I wanted to do is make sure I got everybody in, you know, the first 10 minutes. And, uh, but I don't think that's the way I'll, I'll do it. Um, Kentucky did one year, and I don't, I don't see that happening. But I just wanted to make sure I got some people that have played together together. And, uh, and then we're going to go on who plays with the most effort. And, you know, I, again, I don't mind missed shots. I'm, I'm at, I mind miss rebound opportunities or miss running at the break or the effort related stats is what I, what I'm going to judge this team on and then I'm going to pick and choose accordingly. Chris, you kind of touched on a lot of this, but I'm wondering how this event and just everything with the last couple of days maybe measures up to some of the other bigger events in terms of your demands, in terms of I, I guess maybe what those experiences were like compared to this one. Yeah, you know, we took our team to the game, uh, the Tiger game, and um, uh, we were lucky academically that we could do that. Um, and the guys had it, you know, it wasn't a great time just to be at the game and see the crowd, but we were watching a team that came from nowhere and became somebody. and. Uh, just the energy in the crowd and, and making those players realize how important. I mean, we talked about that uh, in this NIL stage where uh, I think it's the Houston Rock, uh, Houston, what's the Astros? Astros. Uh, they got the kid Hater who's, and he paid 19 million a year. The entire roster for the Tigers has been paid 18.8 million. And, uh, you know, money doesn't win for you. Better players don't, doesn't necessarily win for you. Players who play better wins for you. And so there's been a lot of good lessons learned. There's been a lot of camaraderie. There's 
Uh, I think our guys are appreciative of what they're getting. And uh, this is part of my retention program. You know, I, I want players to know we're going to try to do a lot of things for them and uh, have some fun together. So it's been a little more taxing on me. I, I meant like coming up here, but it, like compared to like a Final Four, I mean, you're in demand in a lot of different places. Like when, when you go there, but it, I mean, it seemed like three fourths of the UP was here shaking your hands in the last two days. I know, that was awesome, wasn't it? Um, I'm very appreciative of that, but there, that was taxing. It, it's different, you know, I, I don't go out much and I went out one night just to meet some people and, uh, but what a privilege, you know? I mean, you know, like I felt like, I felt I was gonna do this thing and, you know, it could bomb, you know, there'd be four or 5,000 people in the big arena and there'd be nobody there. And I had a few sleepless nights over that. And boy, little did I know that we, we, we were just Spartan strong and Wildcats strong, we were UP strong. And uh, that was touching, to say the least. Speaking of UP strong, loyalty and hard work, Tom, coaches are two words that uh, describe you first again loyalty and hard work i would like to thank you and i think all of us would for the fact that you stayed at michigan state i know that nba is a very illustrious nba there's a lot of money there's a lot of fame that goes with it but your up roots i believe and what you learned is why you're still a michigan state spartan leader well you're right you know i had a chance to go to more than a few nba teams and a couple other really good college teams and yet um Michigan State's been good to me, you know, and my old boss, Judd Heathcote, used to say a good deal is when it's a good deal for you and a good deal for me. I do think I've been a good deal for Michigan State. That's an arrogant statement, but I do because uh, I've been there. I, I care about it. My family, I got married there. I raised my kids there. Um, I have ownership in Michigan State. Um, so, you know, that was one of the reasons, but, uh, the biggest reason is they've been good to me too. You know, I remember it was year two and four or five games in, I thought I was getting fired. You know, the president of the board came up to me and said, don't worry about this, this, and this. And, and I had a meeting with my staff and all the people. And after that, we went, you know, like 18 and four, and started the ball rolling, you know, won the Big Ten championship. And it seems like we've won a few since. So, it's just been one of those things, and, I, and every day I work on making sure I'm not complacent, because I think if you stay somewhere too long, you can get complacent. And so uh, I don't think that's gonna happen to me. I, and, and you know, if you wanna know when I'm gonna be done, um, when they get rid of me, or I just wake up and say I'm done. There'll be no farewell tours, there'll be no this or that. Uh, the day that I cheat them out of one, Sent that they pay me or or any time that I should be giving to them, I will be done. And if I'm not right, it, you know, that ain't gonna happen. I'm not saying how good we're gonna be in the years to come. There's so many factors now with this crazy conference and these crazy rules. But all I can do is the same thing I tell a player. What effort do I give? How hard do I work? And uh, That'll take care of itself. Jimmy, you want to wrap this up? Yeah, getting back to the basketball stuff. Um, you, you want a lot of ruggedness out of the five positions. I think Zabala led you with five, nine rebounds today. How's he coming along and doing some of those? Uh, you know, he's been good. And, you know, Coop's been pretty good. Uh, Jax has been real good. He had, when he had eight rebounds, I don't know. Eight. He had eight, and then yep. Paula had nine. That would have hurt. Yep. Got to use glasses now, guys. Times have changed. Um, but uh, when you look at uh, when you look at that, uh, what I need is more rebounds out of book. Uh, maybe the disappointing one I thought he played pretty good was Cohen Carr. Um, he did some things, but I need more rebounds than out of him. And physicality is what he has and he brings to the table. So you know, all in all, Jim, it's uh, it's still a couple weeks early. Um, I got to keep that in mind. I got to keep in mind the distractions of the weekend. And uh, I love my guys. I love my team. 
and I think we play as well as we can play in some effort related things. If the film shows that, I'm gonna address it. If it doesn't, I'm gonna apologize to them and move forward. They were able to get a few open three pointers, but I think you guys were pressing on the defense a little bit more after that. So there were some adjustments going on. You challenged your guys to get out more on that. Yeah, they got better. You know, another thing that got better, we missed five layups in the first half. You know, so their 10, 11 point game was 21, you know. Um, so uh, I harp on that every day, you know. We just uh, just did some things that nobody tries to miss a layup, but they're important. We did shoot pretty well from the line. I think we even got to the line a decent amount, 23 times in a game like that, make 18 of them. Um, Almost, almost 80% is pretty good. Uh, I didn't think we got enough shots off. I mean, we didn't get enough shots off because we got nine offensive rebounds, but that isn't enough against a team like Northern because that's one thing they are is a little smaller, which won't bother them as much in their league. But I, I will say this, he's gonna compete for a league championship again, you watch. He's a good coach, his team plays hard. Uh, he's got a couple good additions. Um, I'm not saying that uh, Blow smoke. I, I, I like this team. I said in, in my huddles a couple of times, I said it at halftime, I said it at the end of the game. So uh, I think Northern's back rolling. Hopefully, hockey will get going and women's basketball and volleyball. And, and I would like to put this challenge out to the writers from here and everybody else um, fans. We need to get football back. You know, football was so good here when I was here, it was so much fun. And uh, that isn't done by just the coach. Not done by just an AD. It's done by everybody. I mean, we had 16,000 people here for Central Michigan. You know, we were we packed every weekend. It was fun. And when you get a bunch of people together, you have fun. I guarantee you, a lot of people have fun today. And uh, it wasn't over a win. They had fun. They had fun because they got together and cheered on a team, and that was good. So. All in all, guys, I, I want you to know that I really appreciate this. I appreciate you. I appreciate our guys coming from way down state and have to do that. I appreciate that uh, uh, it was really fun for me. It was enjoyable for me. But I did get something out of it, you know. Did we handle distractions really well? Probably not. Not to reassess that I handled them very well. Probably not. But uh, all in all, this was, a, this was a good thing for college basketball. You know, Bill Raftery told me at the end, and Steve Shear produced it, that we get calls from college coaches all over the country, you know, and that you watch some other people are gonna try to do what we did. And some of that is in honor of Mark Hollis, who helped get me into a lot of things when he was AD, you know, the, the game at Ford Field, the game in Germany, the game on aircraft carriers, you know, we've done some crazy things. And those crazy things were memories that I'll have for the rest of my life. Today, today, may top all of them, uh, just the way it all worked out. So thank all of you that had something to do with it. Thank all of you for following it. Challenge our people up here. We gotta get all of our sports going and uh, if you ever get downstate, love to see you, talk to you. You guys drive carefully, Judd Heathcote would say, what is it? A, two, three day ride back, uh, you know, and uh, we know it's not, but uh, have a good trip back, and I'll talk to you guys when I get back to uh, campus. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks.